So Node.js is something um, that's really exciting to me. Um, I, I didn't enter, um, I work on the YY team I actually work on Node.js the last several months um, with YY, actually. And it's, it's a really exciting thing. Um, Node.js isn't the first thing to do um, something that's different in JavaScript, right? Most of you are familiar with JavaScript. Um, it's not the first thing to do it, but it's something really exciting to me because of the great things of the person working on it, having the tips folks, the team working on it, having tips folks is what we're trying to do. Um, and at the community respecting that and, and really things around us in a way that hasn't been done before. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about, um, first of all, I'll introduce you to Node.js. Um, why do we use it for Hack Day? Um, and I'll introduce you to a lot of cool things that you might want to use for your hack. Um, what I won't be going into today is a lot of deep dives what Node.js does. If you have questions while you're happy um, and, and using something to get stuck, please come talk to me. I've used almost everything that I'm going to show you today um, and spent hours debugging and all these things. So I'm going to give you some pointers for getting started with things um, and, and give you uh, maybe inspiration for hack ideas or perhaps even um, show you some things where you thought you couldn't do with your hack but it's part possible, um, something like Node. So, JavaScript, of course, um, you typically associate it with websites, right? You, you make web apps with it. Um, or you might make widgets um, on your dashboard or in Windows or browser extensions. Um, you might have, uh, you know, this, this has been around forever, but we're seeing JavaScript in a lot of places. Uh, service sites are the only place. We're seeing them on televisions. We buy televisions nowadays that, that run widgets that, that use JavaScript got to be. Um, HD web apps, um, you can actually use Node.js on HD phones, on Palm phones. Uh, the the touchpad, for example, ship with Node.js services, uh, where you can actually write um, stuff like if you can actually integrate your OS using Node.js, it's really, really interesting stuff. So, um, you can buy boats that automate your home with you know, script with JavaScript. Um, Bloomberg, you, yeah, Bloomberg is a company that does, uh, they do uh, financial services. What they have is they, they have an environment where they want to show um, and display and visualize um, securities and everything, everything related to that, this, this whole realm of stuff. But they actually uh, use JavaScript for it, right? They, they don't use a web browser because they, they don't use some of the traditional web app and a lot of doing this because they have really strict needs. They have to have this working all the time. It's a non-stop system. But they're still using JavaScript and they, they got this, this thing stable and, and working for years. And, um, it, it's really interesting. Well, you, don't, you don't hear about all this stuff, but JavaScript has certainly uh, been in a lot of places for a long time. And it's the most popular language now on GitHub, so this isn't something where um, just people are doing this in closed source. A lot of people are working with JavaScript, uh, and it really shows. Uh, and so, service like JavaScript, briefly, it's not a new idea. It's been around. It's an idea that's also built with JavaScript itself. Um, and it's been refined since then. So there's been a company called Backjet a few years ago that actually had a really nice IDE for service like JavaScript. The product that came out of that was based with, from that platform and created. Um, there's a lot of other companies that are doing, doing stuff like this. Uh, and the open source movie is another path too, is an interesting read just to get, you know, if you're interested in stuff. Um, CommonJS is a standard product that actually um, there's, it's, it's, it's kind of about to reconcile the differences between all, all these different service side jobs platforms. Node.js is just one of them. There's other stuff uh, that came before it, Rawal and many others. Um, things that are based on Rhino or, or other jobs that um, And so I'm sure this will continue, right? That Node.js is not going to be all so it's important for standards. Um, it's really refined right, for over, almost, uh, over a decade, right? Um, it's also been used in Yahoo products, service and JavaScript. So quite well, um, it, you could even make quite well tables that Run JavaScript on Galaxy infrastructure. And that's really powerful. Um, it's been around for years as well. So, this isn't a new idea. But Node.js does it in, in a way that's uh, particularly relevant to hackers um, because it allows you to, do, to solve problems that you, you certainly could have solved before, but probably with more time or with, you know, you, you have to dive in and deal with something that is a little bit lower level. And it allows you to do things that were normally reserved for these lower level kind of things and expose them with a, a beautiful language like JavaScript. Um, so, in a sentence, it's, it's up on there. It's, it's a bit driven I.O. for service like JavaScript. Um, what that means is it gives you uh, this really beautiful independent API for, for a lot of things you do 
for uh, for network to pass or process to pass between them asynchronous. It works really great for that. Um, and what, what it allows to do is, is create web servers, create network servers, um, create things that, that stream. Uh, it, it works, it, it's not itself a web server, right? That's, that's really important. This isn't, you, it's, it's kind of like Ruby is a web server, right? You can sort of write it. Um, but it's a lot better than Ruby for, for writing a web server. And I'll get into that. Um, it's a recent created project. It's very it's pretty young compared to things like PHP, which have been around for a really long time, and people are familiar with. But, and, but it's, it's, as you can see, there's a lot of projects that, that have came about in a very short time that made development a lot easier. So, this is how you get started. Um, this is a HTTP server example, um, complete, um, that only responds to the whole world. Um, and really straightforward, the, the first line is, is one of the most important. You, you see that uh, we're, we're requiring a built-in module, and no by several things. HTTP is one of them. You can also work with UDP uh, data grant. You can work with uh, uh, TCP directly. You don't have to use HTTP. Uh, if you want to use uh, TLS, like if you want to make a secure HTTP request, you can do that with a API that's all baked in. Uh, child processing, uh, you don't have to install it. But you can. There's a lot of modules that you can require them in the same way. Um, but for this example, it's, it's pretty straightforward. We're listening on port. If we don't even look at the request that comes in. Um, and we only look and uh, we can just immediately send a response. It's really simple. Um, and this can handle a lot of traffic, um, obviously, but it's, it's, it's uh, really interesting to see how, how much faster um, something like this runs versus something that we can do a hello world in um, with, with another stream language, right? Because of the way it scales, which I'll get into in a minute. So, first of all, I want to install this. And if you haven't installed it yet, it's really easy to do. Um, so, it's, it's you go to this link right here, and you can kind of get started on this right now. If you're on, you can do it with Windows, you'll need to build it. Um, that's what I recommend you do. It's really easy to do. Um, build, the build system um, works out of the box pretty well. Um, if you're on Windows, you actually have it pretty good, because now you can install a few different binaries and code. Um, if you go to this link, it'll actually show you um, if, you're, if you're running on Windows steps to get the few binaries. If you want to work with, uh, you don't have to use the few binaries, it also installs um, Siglin. Or me, you know, you. Um, but something I want to stress too is that right now the, the node the Node.js project is right now working really hard on getting um, Windows support um, in, in, in terms of making Windows uh, a first class uh, OS on Node. Uh, and it's a really good project. Um, it turns out you can't use the same kind of techniques that we would use on Unix based systems on Windows. Um, and there's further plans to that. If you're interested in that, you can read all about it. Um, the other thing is the Node.js package manager, which is also on this. Um, that's really important. Um, it's the package manager, the backup manager for Node.js models. So if you want to use uh, other functionality, which you definitely probably show you, you definitely use it, it's really easy to, to make use of your project. So when you create a project, you have a, say, a directory in your project. What you do is you um, install a module. And it installs that module not globally, not, not on your system somewhere, but it installs it in a local folder. Um, Called node underscore modules, and then you can you can easily just require that module name inside your application, and that's really nice because you can just fire that file up or target this directory up and send it to someone else, and they don't need to use anything or anything else. They can, they just have all your dependencies in there, um, and it just works. So it's just fantastic. Um, so it's really easy. There's a package registry. I'll see if you can go there. So there's a lot, a lot of a lot of these models, and there, there's a huge community. There's, there's probably well over a thousand of these, uh, and as you can see, it's very active. There's always updates going in uh, from all over the world, um, and so you can browse around. You might be problems, even if I talk about it, problems that you'll find with you know, or probably solve with someone else, and you can easily make some models. I recommend you look at that. Uh, to play with it, you, you can just run Node. Um, running Node by itself starts a replica. If you don't know what that is, it's basically uh, uh, like the, the console that you get in a web browser, right? Um, it's a read about print. So you, you just give it a command to run. You can see the result. Pretty simple. Control V puts it, not control C. Um, if you want to start uh, a script, then it's the same kind of thing, um, node, and then the script name. You can use, um, you can also use a, a hash name in the top of your file, top of your browser file, to make it executable. 
Um, and some people, um, like I said, Node.js is not a web server, it's a tool to make one. But you don't have to make a web server, you can make anything. A lot of people have made um, unit test servers, right? Um, which just read files that are in your Node project um, and then run, run tests on them. And it's a completely um, CLI-based application. And that's perfectly fine. You, know, you might want, and I'll show you ways for things outside of web servers too that are not thought. Um, so you can make it to so, um, so what specifically can you build this? I want to show you some ideas. Uh, which is a project that's healthy. So, Socket.io is one of the things that you definitely uh, want to use if you're trying to work with real life. Uh, it's, it makes it really easy. What I'm showing here is not, it's only half the guy who did it all inside. Um, you see what shows up on the client side. Um, so, instead of having to work with, um, you know, say, WebSocket, if it exists, which you might not, you might have to fall back to like a common style Ajax or a long Ajax or something else to push the data down to the browser. And it gives you, and instead you can just use this, um, and it, it finds the right thing to use, and um, uh, you could just listen to messages that come from your JS server and post them back um, to the to your server, um, and then the, the, the service that API is really similar. Um, you just require software and use it. Um, so it, it's a, it gives you a lot of control. Um, and you can do a lot of things with this, especially like if you were trying to do something where that involves a lot of people, right? Um, a lot of you use Facebook. Um, and a lot of you probably use Facebook chat. So if you ever use that, you, you realize, you know, if, if you're going to do that with something like Apache and PHP, it would be kind of efficient, right? You would have to have, like, five, or if you have, you want to have 500 people waiting on to, you know, to, uh, to chat, right? You would have to have 500 of these Apache processes or some sort of thing. And it probably would work. It probably, you know, it might work for, for, uh, for like, a small Apache hack demo. But if you, what's really cool is, like, what if, during your demo, you wanted to have everyone in the audience to just you don't want your hack to go down, um, and you want it to be really fast, and you can do that. Um, it's, it's possible. So um, if, if you want to make something like Facebook chat or have a shared environment, you can do that. One thing um, in particular is games, like you can make uh, massive multiplayer games. One of them that won a hack competition last year is called Formation, and I want to show this off. So everyone go to this, swarmation.com. Uh, we got swarmation, uh, one one in. So I should see now, ah, so now all you're coming up on here. And so what you see is everyone in the audience is participating in this. Um, you choose socket.io. Um, what you want to do is you want to, over here, you want to make these packets. So you want to make this folder, right? So if everyone works together to make a folder. OK, there you go. There you go. Uh, almost, not quite. You have to do it before the time expires, and then you have to do something else. You get points for completing it. Come on, guys, you can do better than this. This is, this is sad. It's a, it's a, a delta. What is it? It's a plus. Uh, a wave. I think it's too hard for you guys. I don't know. I, I, here. What is this? A <laughs> Yes, whatever, like, uh, 
3D, whatever, you, there's, there's a lot of things you can do. Um, but if you're using something, for example, Perl or Ruby Java, uh, you can use Neo, which provides this kind of similar thing to Node.js, uh, but between proxies and, and Node, between proxies and Java. Uh, and it, the, the protocol that it uses is, is open source as well, so you can just go and implement any language that has that is not here. Um, so it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, it's using an efficient way of uh, uh, doing the best of too, that's more efficient than just using you know, just JSON blocks if, uh, if you're working with something like a uh, large amount of data for a game. Um, so right, I showed off the game and I mentioned the chat and um, there's, there's a lot of other things like we have constantly updating data, uh, like stock quotes for, for, for something uh, for information from the environment API. You um, can have a shared whiteboard, so a lot of people have done this where they can just have a shared collaborative space. That's, don't make that as a hack, do something else. Um, streaming charts is kind of cool. So streaming charts, I won't go into that at one time, but um, that's, that's it's pretty interesting. You can show like, real-time streaming graphs. So if you want to show like, feedback from like, a, a sensor on an Arduino, you can do that and show like, temperature changes, like, temperature fluctuation in the browser, um, and just have that push down to uh, I use that at Yahoo, actually, um, to show metrics while, while I'm uh, benchmarking the applications. Uh, it's pretty interesting uh, to see, to see this real-time data, to like, see the whole wall. It's kind of cool. Um, so, right, Node.js is not, again, it's not a web server, so you need, it's a framework for it, uh, or it's a, it's a cool create one, and you need frameworks to kind of help you out if you don't want to just read it in the field completely. Uh, connect is something that I use for my projects on the lower level, middleware stack for each of the servers. Um, and what, what that means is basically, if you're not familiar with the concept of middleware, though, is that um, instead of like the whole world intent, you just have one function, right? Um, something like connect gives you the ability to chain functions together. So if your functions have um, request and response uh, pairs, you can just use and run a chain of them together. So if you wanted to add, say, authentication support for, for only this IP address, then you can just inject a function that, that runs and adds that, um, you know, checks your headers, checks your coming from, and uh, does modifies the request a little bit and passes it on the next nowhere in stack. Um, so connect is something that I would to check out. Um, if you're going to do something like make your whole website you know, um, look at Express. So Express gives you all of connect based on it, plus uh, view reference. So you can write in Camel, uh, SAS, or CSS, uh, J, there's a lot of different ways that you can do so on the right HTML. You can go down, go nuts. Uh, configuration, uh, software based routing, that in Ruby, uh, and Ruby, and using and starting with routing uh, this simple, right? So you can have to go, uh, there's lots of different mobile and technical features before. Uh, so check that out, expressjs.com. Uh, so debugging is really important. Um, I've got to show you some cool things, but I want to take a brief moment to show you that debugging would be really awesome with Node, with Node Inspector. Uh, what Node Inspector does is it, uh, it, it gives you, uh, well, I should show you. So, everyone's familiar with this in web browser, where you go to the scripts and you can actually go and set break points, uh, load up a script, and, and all this. You can do this with Node. Like, you get the same WebKit style with the other, with Node Inspector. Um, and how that works is uh, Node Inspector actually talks to the V8 debugger um, that, that runs inside of Node. Uh, over HTTP, and, and, and what, it, what they did is the guy who wrote Node Inspector took uh, the, the WebKit, uh, that whole WebKit debugging interface, and it just ripped it out and replaced it. Instead of, replaced, uh, instead of talking to, like, say, the browser uh, JavaScript, and it talks to the Node JavaScript, which is just fantastic, and everything just works. Um, in order to get started with that, you just run Node with dash dash debug, and then your script name, and then you run Node Inspector and separate like that. Uh, and then you can just visit it like on um, local post 8000 uh, or whatever it is, and um, then you can just you can just start going out. One thing that you, you want to note here is uh, the difference between debug and debug dash ERK. Um, so one thing that you, the most frustrating time that I have to debug something is when my application just doesn't start. Um, and if that happens, then dash dash debug doesn't help you because dash dash debug will start running your application and you don't have enough time to go and get the button to it for a bit. So if you do dash to your 
it'll actually set a breakpoint, node will set a breakpoint for you at the first line of the script file that you pass in to run. So that means that you can you have time to go and set up your spec that you're going to visit your page, um, set more breakpoints, and then resume your application. Um, so you can check that out. Um, if, if WebKit is a thing for, for doing that, it's a command line as well, and other people have written debuggers. Um, and you should check it out. It's, it's uh, on the Adobe API page. Okay, cool. Um, but we'll do this. So uh, there's a lot of building stuff. I just showed you some B earlier. Uh, but if you want to work with data grants, um, there's, uh, if you want to work with um, crypto, the file system streaming, um, they're really, really fantastic built ins that you can take advantage of. Child processes, if you want to create B nodes and talk to all of them, uh, it's definitely possible. Uh, there's rich events CPI, so um, you can create your own event emitters. Um, that, that have where you can publish events and have uh, other parts of your app subscribe to them. Um, one thing to keep in mind is the difference between this kind of fifty between one on and once. One common kind of pitfall you will have when using um, uh, events and nodes is that they, they pop into one instead of one sort of uh, but once basically gives you the ability to run a function once and then it, it automatically moves itself. The big problem is not moving really the listeners, they just kind of hang on across the weeks. Um, and that's, that's a big problem you have for everyone in the room and the path, right? You have, it, as they disconnect, these the listeners stay around and you can't get to read. Um, so you want to make sure that you manage that properly. Um, if you're working with large amounts of binary data, um, streams are kind of inefficient with uh, JavaScript in general, so it gives you a way for interacting at a lower level with just uh, a binary stream. Um, so I check that out. It's all the other big thing I want to get on is uh, callbacks. So, like I said before, it's a event driven, it's asynchronous, um, and you're, you, when you do that, you get something like this. It's really lovely. So, uh, it's really easy to write code like this. That's how many example and terrible you're going to find. Like, you're going to have an invitation that's only like you know, 30 times. It's just uh, horrendous. So, and what we're doing here, right, is like we're doing an operational process, an operation stat, and then we, we have to wait because that's asynchronous. It has to go to this and do so. Um, and then when it comes back, we, we run, continue running, right? And we go to the file, and we have to wait for the file to come back and we do so. So instead of doing this, which is, which is hard, um, you can do something like this on the small data. Um, so you do set that stat up here, and then as you can see, it's easier to read and literally go on the same level. Um, we have then, you know, not read file, you can not read. This is what we're doing here, right? Or anything like that. So this is example, but with Revy, um, you can get the idea. You can function like this uh, instead of going and guessing off the screen. Um, and then it makes it really easy for you to set breakpoints and, and uh, you know, understand the flow a little bit better. So uh, this is just a lot of things. Do this instead of just uh, having to like guess and have to put it in. Um, really quick, we're running out of time. So lots of puzzle stuff to show off. Uh, JSON is amazing. If you, uh, uh, it's the implementation of the DOM and on Node.js. So, uh, so basically, it's, it's a DOM that's written to JavaScript. So you can have things like headless browser if possible. Um, what this does is it, this sample code goes and hits Node.js in this page. Um, the full URL for YY is there if you can get it. Uh, it pulls in YUI, and then from that, you get access to the window object, and you can go to the screen screen page. It's like, just, it, this is screen screen, you can tell the comment what the page is. Um, so check that out. But you don't have to use the DOM APIs. Um, right here, it's the YUI APIs. Yeah, so you can use the YUI uh, project that, that we mentioned uh, already. Uh, and you, you, it's even easier to print. Um, so right. Uh, what I want to show is this. Uh, so um, what you're seeing here is like a whole bunch, whole bunch of stuff. This is at express.labos.com. Um, what you're seeing is this is screen screen you did. It's doing that by using YUI, um, YUI.io inside of Node.js, right? So you can use like, the same YUI APIs inside of Node. Uh, if you're already familiar with, say, YUI, or if you just want to use the same thing everywhere, possible. Um, you can also do screen streaming. So this is actually screen streaming all the head up on the using YUI on the server, right? This, this, uh, this whole thing, this is what JavaScript is doing. Um, what's really interesting is you can do things like running YUI free and getting hunted with this. Um, this is actually making a whole server round trip, and uh, it's, it's rendering. <laughs> I can pass the tab here. Um, 
and you start clicking and going, make your request, no data assisted, rendering it quite wide, rendering this widget, which is normally done on some client, right? Um, so you can, you can do things like, like this, and uh, it's really, really interesting. There's a lot of other stuff here in the background. So um, check that out. Um, finally, um, something, something that is a website. So um, there's a really cool project in Serial for it, uh, to talk about physical devices, um, which is a really interesting. Um, you can, there's no reason why that would just be delegated to someone's like web service. You can use it to talk to, uh, to talk directly to like a for example, and uh, like show messages, uh, or talk to a sensor, or maybe you can get up to a website and actually do things like, um, show, like I said before, show temperature data, or you want to know if like a coffee is seen on the table or not, um, and then show that on the website, or like have that change and have people know like your environment is That's possible in, uh, in possible serial work. So check that out, that's your suit. Um, some more ideas. Uh, you can use a, uh, one thing I saw last week is someone had a pentameter, a uh, dial, right, connected to an Arduino, which connected to the computer. Um, and they had like a couple dozen people open up a YouTube video and had it load. Um, there's, a, there's a project called PopcornJS. Um, and then let them, uh, PopcornJS is really easy to check out. Uh, but basically, what the, the end of all this stuff together is that when the guy turned the pinto meter, it caused the YouTube video to seep back and forth. This was synchronized across all the different computers that were, that were watching with Node um, and Node Serial Core, uh, which is which pretty fantastic. Uh, another thing is, uh, you can, one guy actually pulled a boat from a web browser. So it showed a, it's pretty interesting. He had a, let's see if over here. Right, so this guy he hooked up, if you get the idea this picture, uh, he hooked up a, uh, this is a controller interface. So uh, this is a node server showing a uh, C stream uh, widget. The C stream widget is found on top of a partisan boat. Uh, and you can use your arrow keys to control the boat. Um, so you can draw some boat over the internet um, in their pool. And so how you have this connected up is no serial port um, connected to or, or, yeah, connected to this Arduino, which is then connected to a uh, this this the remote control the RC boat. And uh, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 some people, random people on the internet are just crashing around and doing things. Uh, and it, this is kind of a really interesting hack kind of idea, right? It's the idea that some people do this on the internet um, for physical devices. So, but yeah, look at that. Um, so one thing that I have over there set up is uh, I have a whole bunch of LEDs, um, like LED matrices, uh, the displays that you can use with a web printer and And so I have what I'm going to set up over there is um, like show the features of this conference and have that set up so it goes and writes out and you're going to be using the serial port. So you should check that out if that helps you. Uh, and that's about all the time I have. Um, so, right, if you, want, um, if you want to check out what you're relevant to something, this is the slide. Uh, all the slides are on here. This is actually a, a website, so um, you can follow along on your tablet. You can just swipe to advance or whatever you want. It's all written on by live. Uh, if you're interested in like using YY in general, um, take a look at the, when you look at this, you look at the next slide, and it shows you like the source code for, for the slide and everything else. So you can see like if you're one of these YY in general, uh, you can go see it very exactly. So that's our issue. Happy on Twitter.